Ahoy there, hey. Uh, just a couple things here that I picked up at a local um, consignment shop that's nearby my house. Um, wow, that noise is loud. Um, just some miscellaneous stuff. Um, just thought I'd share. Um, this thing is interesting. It's, it's a plug and play video game system of some type and I have no idea what on earth this thing is. It just says versus max and you know it's a nice sort of controller thing. Um, I haven't plugged it into my TV yet but actually the light turns on and everything so it's got batteries and everything so I don't know I just I just am really intrigued often by these um, old plug-and-play systems from just a few years ago and I want to plug it in and see what it does so I don't know I'll probably make a video on it if I can get it to work um, I'm a huge lover and collector of National Geographic magazine oh by the way all this stuff cost me about five bucks maybe it was six bucks something around there real cheap just you know quick sort of pop my head and look around and see like oh some interesting stuff um, and on the National Geographic's I especially love the older ones this one's from June of 1944 which as everyone knows was the uh, month of the D-Day invasion um, where the Allies invaded Europe and landed on um, uh, the shore in Normandy France and I love National Geographic's from the 40s. It's like looking into just almost a different universe. I mean, look at this. The last jar on the shelf. I mean, look at that. You wouldn't even see, and look at the dress this woman's wearing. You'd never see anything like that today. And every, and I love the advertisements, but every single advertisements, advertisement in these old ones is all has to tie into the war every single one of them without fail and th th it's insane because in this magazine there's an advertising there's an advertisement telling you not to buy something I think it's this one right here help them get that long distance call through tonight you can do it by not using long distance between 7 and 10 p.m. this is from Bell they're telling you not to use their service with a paid advertisement it's incredible look at this this is fantastic this damaged bomber coming in this little electrical bit what is that a conductor diode I don't know that's a union carbide ad the back in the back always has a coca-cola ad this one's less racist than usual but um it's pretty cool really awesome painting too have a coca-cola equals howdy neighbor howdy neighbor um anyways this is a cool issue got a nice nature spread in full color about birds um huge article about china and uh what is it mongolia oh what's this one? Oh, whales not whales but whales rather idaho and potatoes um, you know, it's National Geographic. I collect these. I have hundreds of them. I love them. And the earlier, the better. I just love these magazines. So I was super stoked to find this for just a, just a buck or so. Um, here's an old comic, Battlestar Galactica. Um, Annihilation! I saw that and was like, oh yeah. Annihilation? I can dig it. I'm into it. I can dig Annihilation. Um, you know, I don't know much about Battlestar Galactica. I've never seen the series from the 70s, never read a book about it. I s I've seen a few episodes of the modern series and found it, you know, pretty good. Um, but I'm into Annihilation. As usual, though, um, the cover's way better than, you know, most of the rest of the stuff. Oh, pretty sweet Invasion of the Body Snatchers ad here. But, you know, 
I like the ads and it's a decent comic. It's not fantastic. Not enough Annihilation. This is probably the best page in the whole book. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so I, I picked that up because it was a cheap. And I was like, oh, that might be cool. It's all right. Um, <clears throat> and something else you'll learn about me. I like children's music. I like children's records. I collect them to a certain extent, and I collect them for my son. Um, I also collect records with clowns on the cover. So this one's sort of a double whammy for me. Um, <laughs> this is on Capitol. Uh, this sleeve is just, I don't know, it's just beautiful. Um, it's got some ads from Arbozo Records on the back. Um, <laughs> most of them are actually albums of 78s. These three, this one's a single... Uh, single record. I'm pretty sure what was in here was a shellac 78. However, it says here that it was a super flex. Virtually unbreakable. So I wonder if that was an early um, sort of brand name for vinyl. I, I really don't know. I've never heard of super flex. So unfortunately the, the record isn't in here. Um, but I just really wanted this cover, so I picked it up and I put a different record inside, which I'll show you in a second. But just, just the artwork is just fantastic. The Laughing Hyena song. It's just, it's just beautiful. I love it. In Jingle Jungle Land. I'm, I'm guessing this is from the mid-40s to late-40s, probably late-40s, considering the recording ban during the war. So probably late 40s, uh, right before um, LPs came out. So the record that I put in here, and I, I okayed it with the lady at the store, was this one. <laughs> this is a very early, early vinyl record, and you know, it fits well with this laughing song. And <laughs> look at this. Laugh, laugh, phonograph. <laughs> um, now look, it has, even has a, a date on here, 1949. Voco Inc. And the a, the other side is um, everyone's favorite, Yankee Doodle. Uh, at least it's my favorite. I love Yankee Doodle. It's one of my favorite songs. Um, so I definitely collect versions of Yankee Doodle. So it's cool to see that. Um, but this, I mean, I just love. Just love that. That is too cute. I'm assuming this might even be a laughing record, uh, which were very popular in the first, in the earliest days of recorded music. Just uh, records recording people laughing, like fake laughter, for two and a half to four and a half minutes. I am not even lying. And uh, of course, it's cool. It's a very early vinyl record, uh, which is great for children because it's a lot um, more difficult to break than shellac records. And it's this clear orange color, and it even has like these, like these red spots, which I am going to assume were not put in there on purpose, but were rather just imperfections in the vinyl. Um, but they look kind of cool. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they did do that on purpose. This one's pretty scratched up, like a children's record should be, um, if it's been listened to by a child. But it's not too bad, and I'm sure it'll be playable. And it's probably a '78. But I don't know yet because I haven't tried to play it. And this is the last thing I picked up at this little consignment store. They actually had a whole box full, and I'll probably go back to check it out again. But they had a whole box full of um, 78 RPM children's records. Uh, a lot of 6 inches, 7 inches, 8 inches, uh, mostly 78s. Um, definitely old, old records from the 30s, possibly, but definitely mostly from the 40s, early 50s. This one I just picked up because it's a double and just the artwork is just beautiful. Just beautiful. I mean, it's on Columbia. Oh, there's a copyright there, 1947. <clears throat> It says it's narrated by David, Al David Allen, whose name rings a bell, but I'm not sure which bell it's ringing. And then the back cover is my favorite. This is so heavy because it's got two 
shellac 78s in there. Look, there's the Woodsman and Grandma and Little Red Riding Hood. I love how he has a hammer in his boot. Is that authentic? I have no idea. And we've got a catalog on the back. A King Who Couldn't Dance. Great Surprise of Spring. Music Fairy Stories. I mean, I don't know most of these. It even has a, you know, um, there's printing on the spine. And it's a gatefold with a story. And small illustrations. I don't know if this is the same text that's read on the story. I don't know if there's music on the record, I mean. I don't know if there's music. I don't know what. Um, but I do know that, unfortunately, the records are cracked. But they will play, especially on the non-cracked side. Which is one of the cool things about 78s, is they have a cardboard center. So a lot of the times, if they do crack on one side, they're not necessarily cracked on the other. And if you use a, like a big needle or a steel needle uh, on, a, on a Victrola or something, it might cut through the crack and be playable. Um, I'm not going to try the cracked side on my turntable just yet, though. Unless I have a, maybe if I have a busted up old needle to, to use and abuse. Love it ha how it has this awesome little illustration. And again, you, see, you can see on this side, this one's cracked here as well. Unfortunately, but, you know, this thing is a certified antique. I mean, oh, original music composed and conducted by Curtis Bleevor. He's a believer. Um, honestly, it's incredible that this survived to see the year 2015 without being shattered into a million pieces and thrown in the garbage. Um, so, definitely not going to give this one to my son until he's much older. <laughs> but anyways, so that's a small batch of stuff that I picked up the other day. Hope you found it interesting. Um, have any questions or you want to talk about it, leave me a comment. Thanks again. Bye.